Hi, everybody, and welcome or welcome back to the Reading Corner. Today, we are discussing the long-awaited rating system that I use. This is actually what started the YouTube channel. So if you remember from the book tag video that I did, one of my friends asked for the rating system that I use, and I gave it to her, and she said, you and your friend that you got this rating system from should start a podcast talking about your books and your rating system. And so that's where this YouTube channel came from is because I wanted to do a YouTube channel. I'm going to go from the top down. So five to one, and I'm going to give you the definition that my friend gave me as to what defines each category. And then I'm going to talk about some books that are in each of those categories. Five. Want to shout from the rooftops that everyone should read it. Couldn't put the book down. Thought back to it frequently in the process of reading and after. It made me think about the world in a way I otherwise wouldn't have. I would reread it down the line without hesitation. It wrecked my emotions in some way. Is written well for its intended audience. The characters are written with clear sensitivity and accurate representation or all of the above. My first book in this category is Fourth Wing because I cannot get enough. I am eagerly, eagerly awaiting book two to come out. I can't stop thinking about it. I'm gobbling up all the fan theories, anything and everything. I just, oh, I can't get enough. And also because she included a main character with a invisible disability. Violet, it has been confirmed, has EDS or Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. I just found it astonishing that a author included a main character with an invisible disability because a lot of books pertaining to disability pertain to disabilities that are very visible, like blindness or deafness, or if there is something physically wrong with character. For example, Clan of the Cave Bear by Jane M. All. Um, you have the medicine man, also known as the one-eyed mogur. There's clearly something different about him. It's very visible, that type of thing. Another book in this category is Archer's Voice by Mia Sheridan. I just made a video about this, talking about my favorite quotes and scenes. So I don't want to like rehash all of it, but mm, my emotions, oh, my emotions in this book were a lot. And I don't tend to get emotional while reading books. Another book that is in that category is The Spanish Love Deception by Elena Armas. I love this book. I loved the banter between Aaron and Catalina. It seemed like the writer was writing from her own experience. And this was her way of dealing with it. And it just helped me connect to the story and the characters. Oh, it was so good because we dealt with Catalina who has gone through a really bad breakup and her family is trying to get her to date again. And it's only been a year and they're all freaking out. They're like, you have to get back on the dating scene, blah, blah, blah. I really enjoyed that representation of you don't need to get back on the dating scene right away, even if you're being pressured. I also liked the fact that Catalina's past experiences with relationships played into her current relationship with Aaron and that she had to work through it in order to have a relationship with Aaron. Okay, moving on to number four. I either would put it on my list of books to tell others to read without a doubt. I enjoyed the story, genuinely was invested in the characters, would read it down the line again without hesitation, but found a few things that rubbed me the wrong way. Found parts of the story that didn't engage me as well as the rest of the book, didn't find the writing style to match the intended audience, enjoyed character representation, but found room for improvement, or all of the above. Some books in this category for me was Icebreaker. And this is my most current read. And that was because until I hit about 42%, I really wasn't invested in the characters. And then we hit 42% and I was like, sign me up. I'm here for this. And I loved the therapy representation and just the character development. But until it hit 42%, it was a bit slow. 
Another one that falls into this category is The Duchess Deal by Tess Dare. It's a romance novel and it is a marriage of convenience, enemies to lovers, slow burn, and it did what I wanted it to do. Um, got me in the mood for summer and I loved the banter between the two of them. So all around, I, I would highly read it again. I specifically loved that she was trying to give him pet names and he just kept turning them down. He was like, no, no. Um, and then they eventually came up with a an approved list. But what sold me on the book was the ending to the story was something that I was looking for in another story. And I was like, oh my God. Thank God. This is what I needed in the other story that I wanted that I didn't get. Moving on to three. I either somewhat enjoy the story and don't regret reading it once through, wouldn't stop someone if they wanted to read the book, but would tell them getting a summary is good enough, would not read it again, found the story to be dull for large portions of the book, found plot holes for enough of the book that I wasn't excited to continue reading once putting it down for large chunks, character representation fell flat for large chunks of the book, or all of the above. One of the books that falls into this category for me is Travis by Mia Sheridan. It is the sequel to Archer's Voice. And in my opinion, you could just get a summary of this book. While I understand why she wrote it, there were so many plot holes that I just couldn't deal with. The one that I could not get over was the fact that in the epilogue of Archer's Voice, it is stated that it has been five years since the ending chapter of Archer's Voice. And then when you get to Travis, it has been eight and a half years. Now, this wouldn't be a big problem for me if they had aged up the children. So Archer and Bree's kids should be three years older than they currently are. And they're not. The baby that happened in the bonus epilogue is six months. It was stated in Travis that she was six months old. If she was six months old, then it has only been five and a half years, not eight and a half. And I just couldn't get it out of my brain that that happened. Also, in the bonus epilogue, that is in the paperback version of Archer's Voice. They named their daughter Ava. And then when you come over to Travis, she has been named something completely different. She is now named Avery. And I just cannot understand how two of those things can happen when you have an editing team. She even praises her editing team in the acknowledgments. This was um, a three-star read for me. Another one would be Good Omens. If you watched my reading vlog, you know how I feel about it. But I found large chunks of it boring. I thought that it could be cut in half and it wasn't even that long to begin with. It was 220 pages. And I still think that it could have been cut down to 120. Another one that you might have also heard about in one of my monthly wrap-up videos is the reluctant empress again i fell asleep for large parts of the story so obviously i found it boring and i did not feel like i needed to go back and read it to understand what was going on like i could gather enough of what was going on by just continuing to read the story and finally the last one i'll add to this category is covid it was a story that you just need to read once it because it was just telling you the facts about COVID-19. And so you really just need to read it once. You don't need to read it again and again. Moving on to two. I either found it was putting me to sleep when reading it, would dramatically say no to anyone who suggested reading it, found it to be longer than it needed to be, didn't really want to finish it, but had to power through to do so. Didn't find the plot to be engaging enough, would never read it again, found the character representation to be harmful, and or inaccurate or all, all of the above. Now you may be sitting here wondering, you just said you fell asleep for large portions of the Reluctant Empress. Why didn't you give it two stars and you gave it three? That's because it did its job for its intended audience. Its intended audience 
was for people who like historical biographies. And I did that. It told Empress Elizabeth's life start to finish. So it did its job for its intended audience, which is why I put it at number three. One that I put at number two was Grapes of Wrath. I only finished it because I was reading it with someone, but uh, the plot fell flat. They were traveling for large portions of it with nothing happening during the travel. Mm -mm, Couldn't care less. Another one that falls into this category is Betrothed by Kira Cass from her duology, Betrothed, Betrayed. Did not like Betrothed. I did like Betrayed, however. I think I gave it like four stars, but Betrothed just fell flat for me. The premise of the story was that Lady Hollis was trying to court the king and the king was very much in love with her, wanted to marry her, all the things. And then this other suitor guy comes in and it's supposed to be a love triangle, yada, yada. The thing that frustrated me was it was very insta-lovey with the second love interest, which I don't particularly like. Also, she did not make King Jameson the one that was interested in Lady Hollis, aka the first love interest, very likable. I sat there going, oh my god, please don't marry this man. He is a walking red flag. Stop. That is my reasoning for why I didn't like betrothed, but I did like betrayed. The last category is one. I didn't finish it. I have only put three books in total in this category, and I could list you right now why I didn't finish them. So the first one I put was the second book in the series A Curse So Dark and Lonely. The reason that I didn't finish the second book is because all of the character development that all the characters went through in the first book got shot out the window and I just felt like we were starting at square one again and I couldn't, I couldn't do it. The second one that I put in this category was Water's Wrath by Elise Kovac. And this one hurt me because when I originally read the Air Awakened series by Lise Kova, I ate them up. I loved them. They were the main series that I read during COVID-19 in 2020. And then I reread them with Ratiga and we started analyzing it and we both went, this is really, really bad. Um, And the reason I didn't finish Water's Wrath is because it was just really, I hate to say it, but it was really dumb. Like all of her problems could have been avoided if she communicated with Prince Aldrich. Also, I didn't finish it because the second time around, I knew there was going to be a character death and I didn't want to go through the character death again. The last book that I put in this category is Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court. If you watched my July wrap-up video, you know why I didn't finish this book. But basically, this guy is transported from 1942, I think. I don't even know. He's transported from the 1900s, though, and put into the time of King Arthur and the Round Table And he uses his knowledge from his current time period to wow the people of King Arthur's court. And everybody thinks of him as this magical magician. And he uses that for his own gain, to gain fame in this world of King Arthur. And I just couldn't do it. I was like, someone that arrogant and using people for their own gain is terrible. I cannot condone this I cannot finish reading this it is really really bad (laughs) there you have it there is the rating system that I use as well as some book recommendations for each of the five categories slash ratings I hope you enjoyed and don't forget to like comment share and subscribe